Hey everyone, welcome back to Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab a model, and paint along. It's April, people, and I was debating what I should do for April. I think I'm gonna go back to Tyranids because I think Tyranids need another month of love. It's by far the army that needs the most work and the most models need to be painted, so I figured, yeah. And plus, as you can see today, I'm working on some really fun models up on the pipe. I have some models that, you know, in the next few weeks I wanna paint like a Toxicrine, I wanna paint maybe a Spore Pod, um, today I'm painting a really cool model, which I'll show you in a second. So yeah, we're, I'm going to paint some models that I don't have in my army. I really want to bring them in. So uh, yeah, let's get started and paint along. So hey everyone, here's the model I'm working on right now. You guys will recognize him. Big bad Dimacaron. Dimacaron. Yes. So far I've done the base coating. I like the, 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 the back color, so I'm just opening up a drink, and I've used an airbrush on all the tilings and things. Oh, sorry. And uh, I decided to do a dry brush once again, because the dry brush brings out the texture. Um, I really love the texture that they did on the sculpt. So to keep the texture alive and to emphasize it, I'm going to do a dry brush. You know, so I'll dry brush all of the body colors. And that's what today's video is gonna be about. I'm just gonna use my ghost white from Reaper, which is my go-to color, and I'll dry brush it, and then after that I'll go to a lighter color and a lighter color, and it'll all be good. So first let me just put some on my palette. Of course I need a lot. For the masking, as you can see, I did miss some spots of mask, but I really didn't care too much because I, it's the first thing I do is the talons with the airbrush so that I can just paint over um, with other colors later. that lazy cover it. So, yeah, I got some stuff to talk about today, just my last week. It's been a busy week, and I really apologize for the lack of videos. But it's been really uh, harsh lately. My computer's been slow as heck. I gotta figure out what's wrong with it. You know, I'm rendering the battle report for this week for you guys, and there was a power outage today. I had to work today. Um, so I started rendering the video, went to work, came back, and there was a power outage, which sucks, because, of course, my video didn't finish. So I had to start re-rendering it again. And so it'll be up tomorrow. And I still have this week's painting tutorial on the warp to uh, put up as well. It is a Gorman DeWolf model. Uh, this is this week's warp painting tutorial. If you want to check out the warp, go ahead. Uh, it's pretty cool. I had a lot of fun painting up Gorman. I'm going to switch. Uh, there we go. i got to switch just uh, paper towels because, yeah. So, a couple things. First of all, sorry about last week's uh, painting with Jay. It had, um, had audio. Like, it had music in it. And I remember why it's because I accidentally hit the I accidentally hit the paste button when I was at going over the video. I hit paste and I somehow I remember copying the um, the song because at the same time I was editing the um, the remainder of the videos for from um, Adepticon. So it just put that song in. It was not intentional. I'm sorry. There won't be any music today. You know. No. Um, yeah, it won't be. That's cool. So let's bring this guy to life. What else? Yeah, it's been a busy week. You know, I've had a really good week, but, um, yeah. You know, and as I said, I launched... Oh, I'll talk about that after. But yeah, my biggest problem right now is just time. Time has been a really harsh factor for me lately. And now that the rendering takes forever, I'm going to have to do something. I'm either going to have to reinstall my operating system. I also really want to run a diagnosis on my computer and figure out what part... Something is bottlenecking. And there's like five specific areas it could be with this bottlenecking. Uh, the most common based on the problems I'm having is probably video card. But it could also be processor, RAM, um, the hard drive itself, you know. So I'm probably going to try changing my card soon. Increasing the, card, the RAM on the card. Um, it was a busy week. You know, and uh, I had an awesome week, though. It was really, it was a good time. You know, um, I was able to film a couple of battle reports this week, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, basically, Cody Rue, 
you guys know him as Cody Rue, came down and visited me, and he brought some people with him. He brought his son, John, who I razzed the entire time, claiming that he was a fan of One Direction. But he's not, of course, but I had to be a goofball and razz him. Um, he brought down Drewski from Mini Wargaming and Michael Grove, uh, Grooving Grove, uh, and a guy named Hugh, Hugh Genge. So it was really cool. You know, they all came down. We had a great day. Uh, we played a battle report. It took very long to film. So we filmed one battle report. It was a doubles. Unfortunately, Cody Rue wasn't feeling too good that day. His voice was really shot. Well, you'll see that in the upcoming battle reports uh, at Mini Wargaming. Because, oh my goodness, his voice was hilarious. He did this, like, um, New Jersey taxi driver who's been chain-smoking all of his life. That was kind of the voice that that um, Cody Rue was doing at Mini Wargaming. But, um... So, yeah, so he wasn't feeling too good, so I, we did a doubles battle report, and it'll be up. I don't know if it's going to be free or warp. One, I filmed two battle reports this week. One will be free, one will be warp, obviously. I haven't figured out which one. Um, what else? And then, so they convinced me, because I had Monday off. Well, I had Monday morning, Monday during the day off. Um, they convinced me to take some time off and go down to mini wargaming. So I went down to mini wargaming, as I said that I would, and I checked out the new studio, which was awesome. Wow. It's amazing what they're doing with the place. Um, I met Steve, who's a very big guy. He's not as big as I imagined, but he's a big guy. That's all I can say. He deserves the mountain nickname. He's a big guy. Um, What else? Uh, checked out the new studio, and I filmed a battle report, of course, which you'll see eventually. It's, of course, you know, the way I film, I'm like a week and a half ahead of time for filming right now. Mini Wargaming's like a month. So eventually you'll see it. It was me against Leland, uh, the new employee at Mini Wargaming. You'll probably recognize him from, um, I did a battle report with him when I was working at Mini Wargaming. He plays Sisters, and he plays, um, Grey Knights. He's a good guy. Uh, he was one of the people I thanked when I play when I left Mini Wargaming because it was a good battle report with him. I had a really good time playing him. You know, he's a good guy. So he's a, he's a great addition to the to the Mini Wargaming team. Um, so yeah, I played against Leland. Oh yeah, sorry. I should, I should talk about. Let's let's rewind a little bit to Sunday. So Sunday, I uh, we filmed a battle report and I tried out my Grot tanks both sets and they did pretty well. I'm not going to ruin it or anything, but you see, look at this texture that the model has that you just can't see until you start dry brushing it. And all the texture appears. It looks awesome. Um, Grot tanks did pretty well, but they were basically my opponent's targets. Uh, I played again, it was orcs. It was a 1500 point orcs list of mine, played by me and Michael Grove, um, who was another orc player, versus a 750 list of... Uh, it was Necrons and Space Wolves. Now, you guys might remember John. He and I had an awesome battle report last year at this time. Or about this time. So, yeah, he's a good Space Wolf. He's a young Space Wolf player. And, um, and Space Wolves and Necrons. So they really picked on the Grot Tanks. And they were kind of the first things to die in the game that died on our side. So, But they did pretty well. I was pretty uh, proud of them. That 5-up invul kept them alive sometimes. Um, I'm just going to un stick my paint here. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a jam. That's what's doing this. So, um, yeah, we had a good time. And then we, they convinced me to come down to Mini Wargaming, which I would. You know, as I, t I told them I would if I was available. I really wanted to meet Drewski. Um, so, and, you know, Steve, and then we'll go see my old bosses and see, have some fun. So we went down, went to a burger joint on Sunday, which was fun. We got there like five minutes before the place closed, so I felt a little guilty, but it was all good. Um, and then, man, Mini Wargaming was good. But the thing is, I didn't have a lot of space, so I couldn't bring a lot of models, and I didn't have a lot of time, because I had to come back that um, Monday night. So what I did was I brought my Imperial Knights. You know, now that I have three, three can basically make up a list. Like, the three combined is 1,200 points. So the choice is, do you go with a fourth knight for 1600? Or do you, like, I filled it with um, 
in a bow report I filmed later in the week, I filmed it with a couple guys, uh, Cypher and uh, an assassin. So, there we go, that's a good color. Um, so I brought down my knights, because as I said, I didn't have a lot of time, and so I had to make for a quick battle report. What makes a quicker battle report than knights, right? Because, oh my goodness, they are hilarious. So I brought knights, and I felt guilty, you know, because knights are not a normal army. Um, so of course I gave Leland some notice, and he list tailored extremely against me, but he I, he asked for my permission to do so, and I said, okay, you know, I didn't mind at all. He says, bring an unusual army. If he didn't list tailor, his army would be kind of useless, whatever he didn't tailor, you know, if he because he played Sisters of Battle. And for those of you who don't know, Sisters have two themes. They're really good at carrying flamers, or meltas. Really, that's the two things of the sisters. They're 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 people. They 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 flamers or meltas, and usually that you see a combination of both, because the meltas to take down vehicles and armor, the flamers to take down hordes. Makes sense. Um, his list was hilarious. It had like twenty six, including combis, twenty six or twenty seven flamers, not flamers, meltas. Like, it was outrageous. And I you know, I saw the list and I was like, oh my goodness, this game is going to be really quick. And um, it wasn't. It was actually really, I found it really, we played, uh, it was kind of modded kill points. But uh, the Knights really held their own against the Meltas. The problem is with Meltas, I found, was that his guys would frequently try to get within, I, it was just a management of inches. Because my guys were outranging their Meltas. Because their Meltas are kind of useless. Unless you're 12 inches away. You know, because otherwise your front, your, your, um, they need threes or fours to hit. I forget which one. But then it's five or, fives to clan, sixes to pen, right? And I have a four up invul. So unless they were more than 12, less than 12 inches away, they really couldn't do a lot to me. But if they were that close, I have such a large, like, um, knights have such a crazy assault range, because they move 12 and then assault. So, yeah, every time he tried to get close, like, he would, he basically get one shot off, and then whatever was, then I would just destroy, um, what was shooting at me. And the problem is, every time I destroyed something, he had one less squad to deal with the knights. So I'm not going to ruin the, obviously, because you want to see the battle report and stuff. And as I said, it's, I felt a little guilty bringing knights, but they knew, right? He knew, and there was heavy list tailoring to balance it out. But then I thought, wow, the knights actually really held their own. It was good. I want, I'm not going to ruin the game. But, um, yeah, I was actually quite surprised how, how well the knights did against an art. Now, sisters, of course, but still. Um, how it, well it did against an army that was very, very tailored against them. You know. He did have bad luck. A bit of bad luck. And I had a bit of good luck. I rolled my four of invuls for a couple of turns like no one's business, but it was just fascinating to me. Um, how well he did with a tailored, and like how well I stood up against a tailored army. So, that was kind of cool. Um, and then I really want to try out my, my Imperial Lance again. So, I had another battle report later in the week. Um, and I filmed it against a really cool cat named uh, Stu. And Stu, and I played a couple of battle reports together. He's a good guy. He plays Astro Militarum and a couple other armies. He's going to get into Orcs eventually as well. He has a bunch of Orcs, he's just painted them. Um, so that's cool. So next time I'm probably, next time I play him, I'll probably play orcs. That way we can have an orc, orky game. Um, and so once again, I warned him, like I, I gave him plenty of time and I, I, I t talked to him and I said, I, I, if it's okay with you, I want to try knights again. But this of course wasn't, uh, the same list I played a mini war game. A mini war game, I borrowed one of their knights and I ran a four knight list. This one, as I said, I just ran three knights with um, some allies. 
So it was cool. And once again, um, because he knew it was playing knights, of course, student, ta like, it wasn't pure tailoring or something, but he knew he was playing against knights. So he wouldn't bring anything that would, wouldn't, um, you know, he, he intentionally tried to avoid things that are useless against knights. Because then it would just be, what's the point of bringing it? Knowing what you're, like, when you're up against knights, knights have to be the easiest army to tailor against because there's not that many confirmations, right? You don't, you know what you're up against. You're up against armor 13 front with a lot of hull points and you know your job is to strip off those hull points. And he did. Like, he brought Pask and Pask is awesome. Of course, he didn't, he wouldn't only, like, he would have brought Pask probably against anything because Pask is awesome. Um, and once again, I was very surprised, and I'm not going to reveal on who won or something, but uh, we played Maelstrom War, actually. And I was very surprised at how well the Knights fared against an army that was rel it wasn't as badly tailored as Leland's. But, um, yeah, you know, it's an army designed to kill Titans. It was definitely an army. It was a, chal it was a challenge. But uh, I was really happy with how well the Knights performed. So... You know, it seemed, you know, so maybe, I don't know. Right now I'm debating how, are, are knights broken? I don't think so. They have certain, knights have some huge glaring weaknesses. Uh, I.e. flyers. You know, the, the Acheron, not the Acheron, the Castigator is pretty good against flyers because of his twin linked. But besides that, like the Lancer only gets six shots. And so statistically he'll hit with one of them. A strength seven against armor, usually 11 for flyers, sometimes 12. That doesn't. That's not reliable enough. Your opponent may not even jink. And the Acheron has a giant flamer template, which is useless um, against flyers. And the other guys, the Paladin and the Errants, they have blast templates. Once again, completely useless against flyers. So. Flyers, number one, are a huge glaring weakness. Uh, you can deal with them, as I said. Like uh, my, I'm basically just shooting with my Castigator, praying for some good hits with my Twin Link. Eight shots, you remember. So I get eight shots, Twin Linked. Statistically, I will hit on um, a couple, right? So, but again, another glaring huge weakness is Armor 14. Uh, high Armor is really tough on knights, I find. Because you gotta run at that land raider or whatever it is, you know, Lehman Russ, whatever has the armor. Um, because otherwise you're not gonna pop it. All the guns, you know, the best gun is the, uh, for that job would be the knight errant, I believe, or the knight pallet, one with the melta. One with 36 inch melta, so you get within 18 inches and you just hit it with a blast and hopefully blow it up. But it's only AP2, I'm pretty sure. So you need to roll at 6 to blow it up. So once again, armor 14. Unless you get in close combat. And then once in close combat, it's just hilarious because it's strength D. And it's, like, if you get 2 hits on a land raider, it will blow up. Statistically, it takes like 3 hits or something like that. That's it. And then it's just gone. It's raining outside. Yep. It's pouring. I think it just started pouring after I got in here. Um, where else? There's a couple errors I missed. So, yeah. Those are the big weaknesses of Flyers. And the thing is, no, the big weakness of uh, Titans. And the thing is with Imperial Knights is because you have so few models, like, the most models I've run in my two, I've only tried Imperial Knights twice. I ran four models once and I ran three models, or sorry, five models the next time. Right? There's certain cards in Maelstrom of War that you're just never going to get. Domination, you will never get. Because you only you can't control six objectives with five models, and if they kill a model, you're down to four models or three models, and that's even more hard because to get to where you need to go, they are fast, right? But they move twelve inches, but it's just really difficult to get them where you need to go. Your opponent can easily hide or just lock you in combat or something with a squad that maybe has a good invul. And uh, at lunchtime at mini wargaming. Matt and I had a bit of a talk, and he was hearing how well my knights were doing against Leland's um, sisters. 
And he's like, well, next time you'll, you'll come down and I'll play Necrons, just pure warriors against you. And I said, well, to be fair, Matt, I know people love the idea of Goss versus Knights, and especially like warrior spam versus Knights, but I personally don't see it as being that strong, I said to him. And he goes, why? I said, well, let's do the math here quickly. You know, if a knight has six hall points and a four-up invulnerable save, it takes statistically, you know, 12 glances to kill a knight because he passes half of them and loses his last hall point and dies. So 12 glances, but you're, it's sixes to glance. Not, you know, it's, it's not easy to glance. It's sixes to glance. So sixes to glance means you, for 12 glances, you, need to sh you have 72 hits against the same knight. 72 hits. And uh, to get 72 hits, you either need... Well, to be fair, they're, they're Ballistic Skill 4. So 72 hits is 108 shots. So either you need 54 rapid-firing warriors, or 108 not-rapid-firing warriors. Focused all at the same exact target with statistics, right? Obviously, you can get better luck, you can get worse luck. But this is just doing the numbers. And he said, yeah, I never thought about it like that. I said, yeah. And how often, you know, the um, the range of a rapid-firing warrior is 12 inches. So you'd have to have 54 rapid-firing um, warriors within 12 inches of a knight. So I don't, I don't know how that would happen. And then if it did, the odds are you don't have 54 warriors within 12 inches. And then when, the, when he survives, he is going to just blow out of the water whatever is there. Like, especially if it's an Acheron. He lays down a Flamer template. Strength 7, AP 3. So now you're rolling 4 or 5s for your reanimations, or you're dead. So he'll wipe out half of the thing he touches with the Flamers. You know, so they're, they are, they, I do see them posing a threat to a knight or two, but an army of knights, they just couldn't have the firepower. To, the problem is that with these, these armies, if, especially like, a, let's say a squad of, um, someone went warrior spam, just giant amounts of warriors. The problem is with that list is that the more warriors I kill, the weaker you are against me. Right? Um... Uh, it just becomes, and that's the problem. It's just the more I, I focus on your guys and kill them, and basically these knights are designed to kill a thing a turn, essentially. Each one can kill a lot per turn. Because either they, they jump in close combat, or they shoot, you know, most of them have really large, have large blasts and are good at taking out things. So whatever they want to kill, they kill. And then you've lost more models. And the more models you lose, you know, it's a game of attrition, essentially, at that point. You can't hurt them as much, as bad as you did at the beginning. And then eventually, you just kind of, the more I pick on, you know, the more that the knights pick on your guys, the less you have to deal with Eventually, you don't have much to deal with them. And then they kind of just walk all over you. So the only thing is Maelstrom War is you got to get your objective points early and just survive, basically. You play the game of Let's just try to hang on with a deep with a lead. If the, if you can't kill the knights, essentially, you tie them up and prevent your opponent from scoring points. So it's interesting. I don't know. So essentially, what is the best against knights? Probably drop pod and melt the stern guard kind of thing. Call me melt the stern guard, because if you can drop in behind your opponent and you have a threat of blast cannons and meltas, the invol for knights is only one side. You declare the side at the beginning of the shooting phase. So basically the knight player will look at the other armies and go look at your army and their location, go, okay, how many guys are in front arc? How many guys are in back arc? You need to flank them or go from behind because you need to get that that Titan player to expose a side of their armor that doesn't have an involve. And then it's easier to penetrate. And for every pen, you get at least a hall point. If it has AP2, you might get more hall points. And then you take out a knight. But you got to assume that pretty much anything that you throw at the knight may die. 
Because once you blow up the knight, it might scatter right onto them and kill them. So, but it may not. It depends on obviously what kind of knight, you know. So what I like to do is just put all my knights right beside each other to block, to give each other cover saves on the sides. And if you know your opponent is bringing in like drop pods turn one, you just hug, hug the end of the board. So there's no way your opponent can get rear armor. And then if they try to get side armor, they run the risk of deep strike mishapping, which can happen. So just to the so that you don't get these guys but it's it's still strong I don't know but the LVO people you know a Tiernan player won the LVO tournament so they had to face Knights so they must have had an answer to Knights Flyrants tons of Flyrants as I said Flyrants are the bane of Knights existence because they can't really do much against them Tell your opponent that hey, you know I have this many flyrants, and you go oh, good luck trying to shoot them down. You know I jink. You need sixes to hit me. An acheron would still stand a pretty good chance of taking off a couple wounds off a of flyrant, I guess, but probably one and a half per turn. That's not a lot. And then they jump in, and they have those eight. They have the flamers that. Hurt the knights. Yeah. So that's been my week, basically. I played a couple battle reports. I had a great time filming at Mini Wargaming. And uh, most importantly, though, I had a great time hanging out with the guys um, that came down to play me. And we went out for food. And we had a, just, yeah, I went and chilled at the hotel with them uh, in Welland. So we had a great time just hanging out, talking, and getting to know each other. Because I didn't, I've met Hugh before, or Drewski, or... Mike and I met each other, but I really didn't know him that well. Uh, I met him my, actually my la very last day of Mini Wargaming. He was playing as Dave. And uh, he didn't know it was my last day. But uh, I don't even know if Dave actually knew it was my last day in retrospect. But yeah, It was good seeing Dave again. Good seeing Matt. I didn't get to meet Ash, unfortunately. I wanted to meet Ash and talk to him and stuff. But uh, it was good seeing Chris again. We were going to film like... We didn't film it, unfortunately. People were wondering if I was going to film a video where I got kicked in the crotch again. I was willing to. I just ran out of time. Hey. I'm safe for well. In a way. It's customary. To my people. You know? Um. Right now I'm just doing some Xenithal, basically highlight uh, dry brushing with this. So I'm focusing on all the raised areas with each step. I'm going lighter and lighter. And I just knocked him off. That thing has been loose all day. I didn't actually just break him then. So, so yeah, each step I'm getting lighter and lighter. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to now just do some a little bit of white. And get him uh, looking awesome. I can't wait to try this guy on the battlefield. His rules seem almost fake. I once I watched an opponent explain his rules, and it sounds so fake. Because, like, his opponent called him on it, and he had to show him the rules, and it was just hilarious. Because, um, it was, it's like, here's a Dimecaron. He gets this many attacks, but he has two different types of weapons. And if one weapon hits, um, one weapon goes, you know, if he gets a hit on a six, he gets another attack at initiative one. And that one has instant death. And then, if that weapon causes a wound, he gets a token. And then the token can be used for feel no pain at a later destination or something like It's just like, what? Show me the rule. Because it just sounds so silly. But yeah, he's going to be fun to try out. He's one of those models, though, that draws a lot of firepower. I was talking to a lot of Tyranid players at LVO, and they found that the Dimacaron, Dimacaron is uh, just a huge wound target, basically. Turn one, if your opponent doesn't... like The thing is... Most people at the tournament were predicting knights, right? So they, they tailored their list against knights. So drop pod lists were prevalent with Meltas. And so turn one, uh, they, of course there were no knights on the table, and they'd see this giant hulking monstrous creature compared, like, dwarfing everything in its way. So people would be like, oh, let's take that out. And that's what happened most of the games, that turn one, 
people would just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot the Dimacaron until it was dead. And so nothing else died turn one, but you lost this giant point of a model. And a lot of the time it gave a first blood. I was talking to a turn player that every game he played, the Dimacaron was first blood if his opponent went first. I think he played four games where his opponent went first in every turn. Every game, his opponent was able to kill him turn one. Because people brought high arm penetration. And um, he's kind of the, the he's kind of the rule where, as I said, he's only a three up uh, a three up armor save. So he can get through that really easily. You know, very few Tyranids actually have a two up armor save. It's silly how little Tyranids have access to two up armor. You know, Tyranifex. That's it. There used to be the, the heavy armor that, uh, or the, you know, the super armor that uh, Tyranid uh, High Tyrants could take. But then they took that away. Because that was too crazy, I, I guess. Yeah. So, what else? Oh, yeah. Um, I did a practical joke video. I've always wanted to do this practical joke video, and I decided to do it yesterday. Because, you know what, every year, a lot of the big companies like Games Workshop does a practical joke. And they did one this year, and I'll talk about that one after. They did a practical joke. For those who didn't catch it, they did. It was on their, if you have if you have their mobile um, feed, you, um, or their, like, you know, their feed that they do in mobile phones, uh, there was definitely a joke in there. Their joke was that uh, for a limited time, they will be, as a gift to us, a free bonus putting in life-size replicas of the weapons of 40k into their shipments for their web store orders. <laughs> like, I was like, what? No, uh, as I said, Games Workshop always pulls a joke on, on April Fool's Day, and that was a good joke, because that was way too good to be true. Remember one year, they did this custom, like, it was a custom spray gun that had built-in templates, so you just hit a button, and it did perfect Omega symbols for Space Marines, and like, it was just perfect. It was so funny. And then you're like, this thing's so amazing. And then you look at the date and go, oh, they fooled me, Jerry. Fooled me. So, yeah. And then, of course, I always wanted to do the Golden Demon video, and my friend Annie and I have always talked about me doing it. So I decided, you know what? This week, I intentionally held off the Miniature Painting 101s, so yesterday, because I did earlier in the week, it just wouldn't have been as good of an effect. So I held off intentionally the videos. It was filmed a while ago. but uh, And so then, yeah, I just... <laughs> uh, I'm such a goof. And I was kind of hoping that people would take it as a fun joke, and I think they did. I, even, I layered so many insights into that thing that showed it was a joke. Like, it was... It hadn't didn't have a... Um, a number in the title. Um, me painting to Golden Demon Standard is laughable to a lot of people. And uh, I put like little half a second clips of words into the, the video as well that said like, at this point, when I started showing the model, and I was like, and talking about choice of demon models, I put a slide saying like, at this point you probably should be questioning what Jay is saying. And then later on in the video I said, are you still watching this? It's it has to be a joke, and I'm like, this definitely has to be a joke, and you know, I kept going through it. But uh, it was pretty funny. So, everyone, April Fools, it was awesome. I probably will pull the video eventually, because it's a troll video, and the problem is in the long term, it doesn't serve a purpose to me. You know, people can see that it was posted on April 1st, but they'll see it afterwards, and I don't know, I'm debating about that. So that's one of my questions today to you guys. Should I remove the video because it's a funny April Fool's joke, but after that it's just a space filler, and then I can end up, tr you know, anybody who's new, I can trick them into watching a, a video about how to paint to a higher standard. And I'm also wondering about how many, like, golden demon painters I'm going to piss off, but who cares? That, that one I'm not really too, you know, it's a practical joke. So, he's looking pretty good. For these parts, I'm going to maybe airbrush some blues in and then do some slime. That's definitely really, um... It definitely has some Zenithal highlighting to it. Um, so yeah, that's my first question to you. Do you think I should remove the video, or should I just keep it as a fun, practical joke? You know, I'm a goofball, and I, I have fun. And I'm glad that I was able to finally do it. As I said, that was just awesome. And the Wrath of King model is really nice. 
people keep talking about the Wrath of King model. It was really nice. It was fun to paint. Except the fact that I felt guilty that I was just painting gold. I'm going to have to strip it in the near future and repaint it. Um, to be, you know, a nice... Maybe it'll be a painting tutorial in the future. We'll see. Maybe it'll be, yeah, in the warp. Or for free. We'll see. What else? I launched my Patreon page, people. People have been asking about Patreon for a while. And not just one or two. I'm talking about like dozens of people have been asking about Patreon. So those who would be asking about Patreon, here's my Patreon spiel. Um, once again, Adam, if you're watching this, you missed a spot. Uh, so my Patreon spiel. So here's my Patreon spiel. Um, I'm doing Patreon, obviously. Do I expect any of you to, to jump over to Patreon the second and support me? I know someone will, I know people will, but in no way do I f feel you guys should be obligated. I, I, I don't. This is for people who want to help me out and act, I think it will act as a catalyst um, for me accomplishing my goals. And that's essentially it. People really do want to support me on Patreon. And so I felt that my pride was getting in the way of it. So I was, I, I, uh oh. I'm out of my color. I should have thought about that before um, doing this. Let me see if I have any more. I should have realized I was out of calendar now. Oops. It's a late talk. I think stops them. Yes, excellent. I thought I had an extra batch. So, I usually carry two of the ones that I... Um, it's a bit older, so I'm going to have to give it a shake. But, um, yeah, so basically, here's the, the spiel about it. So, I did create a Patreon account. And if you want to support me, just like a dollar a month, it really does add up, and it would be greatly appreciate. But no obligation, as I said. Um... For those of you who want to watch my content and keep it free for yourself, feel free. I'm not mad about it. In fact, that's my goal. I love producing free content as well. And, uh, you know, awesome. I, You know me. I'm not out to get rich. I just want to quit my other job and do this for a living. And um, I'm going to put the, for the first month or two, I'm going to put the money towards equipment, i.e. upgrading some parts of my computer so that my rendering won't take forever. Um... And maybe some audio equipment eventually. I'd love to get a microphone, you know. And uh, for those of you who want to check my my Patreon page, it is when it's literally just Mini Wargamer J. If you type in Mini Wargamer J, it should show on on Patreon. It should come up as my uh, page. And uh, yeah, it, any support would be awesome. But again, feel no. Don't feel obligated in the least to do it. Any support that you guys can do by watching my videos and painting along with me and having a good time, that is the support that I, I need. And But just this could act as a catalyst because I would like to bring... Basically, here are my end goals. I want to quit my other job because it's just taken too much time out of my work on my channel. And then I want to bring eventually do at least one painting tutorial a month. And what I decided to do is... If a certain goal is met, um, if a certain goal is met, I will, put, every month it's going to be decided by the, the Patreon supporters, because that's their benefit of uh, supporting, and so they decide, but if a certain goal is met, the list will only be comprised of relatively new models that have been released re recently, and then the winner... Uh, sorry, then the uh, after it's painted, I'm going to randomly draw a Patreon supporter. And that person gets the model. So it's just kind of cool. You know? But uh, that's if one of the, that's one of the higher end goals. The middle goal is me quitting my job to just focus on this. And I'll be... If, the thing is, if I can quit my other job and focus on videos full time, like, the, there will be no question every week that you will see the five video lineup... Um, Q and J will be back. I think I might film a Q and J tomorrow, but Q and J will be back every other week. Uh, how to play 40 K will be back with a fricking vengeance. It's the series that I want to do the most, but it's also the series that takes the most time to make. 
um, because it takes a lot of time. I have to map out what I want to do. You know, it, it's not a quick series. It's not like a battle report where I can literally just do it blinded, be, blindfolded because um, I've done battle reports, of, you know, hundreds of times. So that's a series I really want to do. And then, as I said, it, it would just expect that every week. Hand, day in, day out, you will know that if it's Monday, you'll see a miniature painting 101, Tuesday a battle report, you know, and eventually my dream is to have two battle reports a week because battle reports are by far my most viewed videos. So I would love to do um, two videos a week, two battle reports a week. You know, that'd be cool. And then eventually get into other games, you know, Malifone Infinity. Maybe at that point, fantasy will be sorted out and we'll actually know what's going on with it. And we'll do it. You know? Yeah, so that's my dream. And I'm hoping that maybe Patreon, as I said, people, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how it's going to turn out, but people kept asking me on Patreon. They want to support me. Also, there's people in other countries that can't get the warp, you know? So I said, okay, if people want me to make a Patreon account, I will. And so as I said, if you want to go check it out, awesome. And if you don't, awesome. I'm not upset. You know, YouTube is a free community. And one cannot be upset if people want to keep, you know, if, if people, you know, don't want to contribute, it's okay. Keeping up with Gen Con right now. Interesting stuff for that convention as well. I'm excited for Gen Con as well. I, after every convention, I just want to go to the next convention and have fun. So that'll be fun too. I'm excited about that one. It's many, many months away though. I don't think I'm going to go to another convention after that or before that one. We'll see. Maybe one will come up that I can go to in Toronto or somewhere in the northern states. There's one called Captain Con that actually sounds really fun. There's a Kickstarter for it. Oh, by the way, let's talk about a couple Kickstarters as well. Um, two Kickstarters that really caught my eye this week. One was Captain Con. And the other one was, uh, it's almost done, but the, the Impact Miniatures, the ones who made all those chibi miniatures that I bought at Gen Con, uh, Adepticon, sorry, they're doing a Kickstarter as well for their new line. It's pretty good, cool stuff as well. And basically just... How much ever, it's really good. Basically, you how much ever you pledge, you get that much money in models. And their models are pretty cool. I really like these GB models, so I'll be painting some up over the next few months. Having some fun painting them up. One reminds me of Larry from uh, the uh, Clash of Clans. I just accidentally painted my shirt blue, but that's okay. This is my painting shirt. <sighs> yeah, so that's life, you know? And as I said, I'm never going to stop working hard for my goals. And it was, I knew it was not, I knew, always known it's not going to be easy. I'm just going to work hard. And I really hope one day soon, probably this year, I hope, can I can just focus on my videos and kick butt. Even maybe one day, 
Get a second, get an employee. Bench way down the line. Somebody was joking with me that I should put that down as one of my goals on Patreon. If I hit a certain amount, I hire an assistant. If I hit a higher amount, I hire a female assistant. All right. Who made that joke? Mm, I forget. Someone told me. That was pretty funny. But uh, not in the short term. As I said, I just want to upgrade my equipment so I can make better videos. Upgrade some terrain. Um, not by like talking about the terrain that that uh, Greenleaf made for me. I'm talking about. Uh, I want to change the. I want to get the other Citadel Realm Battle Table eventually, and then use Greenleaf Terrain's terrain on it. I think it would be just be amazing because it would mix up the terrain. You know, different scenario. Plus, if I ever want to do campaigns, uh, the rain in campaigns falls mainly on the terrain. You know. So we're an hour in, almost. I'm gonna call it soon, because, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes. Do another maybe 10. And then, what I'm gonna do after is just do another coat of this blue, build it back up in certain areas. And make it much more solid of an appearance. That's looking cool. It's starting to really take effect. I love this because after a few colors, it really starts with my color scheme. It really starts to look awesome to me. Or at least my awesome, you know. Then I got a painted diamond here on for battle reports. How awesome would that be? I'm going to try him out. He's not that expensive. And he's fast attack. So that's awesome because usually, like, for Tyranids, it's that heavy support that you're like, oh, what am I going to do in the elites? I guess technically, you know. It leads to a lot of time. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Hmm. Where's my game? So we'll see. Also, I'm hoping that eventually people want to do the sponsorship level as well. The, on this, there's a sponsorship level as well on my Patreon account. That um, that people want to sponsor videos. What they basically do is they buy their spot. They buy an ad in front of one major video a week, a month. Sorry, not a week. So someone could put their you know their company in front of a battle report, and be advertising for them. I think that eventually will happen because. Some of the smaller companies may want advertising. My battle reports do get a decent amount of views. They get, you know, I have many, most, more than half my battle reports have 10,000 plus. So, in the long run, obviously. Um, so that would be, you know, it wouldn't be that much for advertising. And with our, like, typical things, how much things cost in our niche, if basically if a company sells to one person because of this ad, they'll probably make their money back and then some. I was de also debating of like making an entire month of painting with Jay dedicated to one model. I thought it'd be kind of cool. If I wanted to paint a model to an extremely high standard, but uh, maybe I'll do that in the future. That's another question. Maybe I should do that in the future. Yeah. Maybe. Of course, my big question to you is, should I keep that video up for the first one? This guy's starting to really take... shape. Another couple hours on him, and 
Maybe not even. There's already three colors, but I don't know. I want to do a couple more effects on him. So maybe this guy will be my model. Maybe next week I'll work on him again. We'll see. As I said, I just want to keep doing Tyranids because right now my Tyranids are the army that need the most love. And... Yeah. That's it. I just want to get them out of the way and try out some new models and battle reports. Like a Diamond or a Toxicrine, or... His models are getting a little monotonous. For, or predictable for Tyranids. Actually, most of my armies. I play, I, you know, I tend to stay with the same thing. I tried Grottings out, but that was a cool, um, that one ar army, and, uh, yeah, they're cool. Where's my other one? Sorry, I have another, there we go. Um, I want to keep, you know, mixing my armies and stuff. Uh, Dark Angels will eventually get a month, because they, um, they need one too, as I said. Dark Angels are really in a month. Dedication. But then again, I might just paint some guys. Let's see. Like, I use the painting tutorials as well as a way, of, as a catalyst, because the painting tutorials, I tend to paint more important models. It's much more, it's cooler to do a painting tutorial, which is why most people don't do them. It's always cooler and, and harder, but it's more fulfilling in my opinion. Just painting tutorials on characters, because as opposed to like, you know, as I said, less is it, less from Awesome Paint Job is stupidly popular as well. And he's a great tutorial as well, nothing against the tutorials. I'm a huge fan of Lesses. But um, he does tend to like basic Space Marines. But to me, when I do my tutorials and it's a character, at the end I have a painted character. You know, and by having a painted character, I that adds you know a couple hundred more points to an army that I collect usually, or I can use them in face off or something like that, and done. You know, it's it's not just a space marine that's worth thirteen or sixteen points. And... So. You guys know, I'm in it for the long run. I'm in it to win it. I'm going to keep working hard. Only going up. That's because, you know, hard work and dedication. That's been a good week. I got to meet some new gamers. They're awesome guys. Hugh and I had a long talk on the way up. He's an interesting guy as well. I like him. He's a good guy, he likes people. And, uh... It was really cool seeing Dave again, Mini Warrior Dave. And of course, you'll see in the battle report with Dave and Dave, uh, Cody Roo, I, uh, I lifted a lot of models during it. <laughs> I lifted the same model repeatedly, actually, during it, so... It was fun. Eventually, I want to make t-shirts as well. I have a couple of other ideas of things I want to do. And they will eventually happen as well. But my number one priority is my channel. Everything else is just on the side. I don't want to do it unless I'm to the point where I'm comfortable with all my channel stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah. That'll be cool. We'll be by the time Gen Con rolls around. Maybe I'll be able to bring a little bit of merchandise. Okay, cool. And if I can get, just get comfortable with my channel and I can get ahead of my videos, maybe I'll do commissions again. We'll see. Till then, no, I can't, but I still gotta finish this commi giant commission I have right now. We're gonna have a little bit of time because the person isn't using the models. And keeps repeatedly adding to his army. Dalai Makara. 
long time I've run. And it's pouring out. It's a good thing I didn't bring in my screen. But yeah, that's life. You know, it's it's hard work and dedication, but it payoffs. And, you know, it always does. If you work hard, I hope you know everyone here who works hard, it pays off. That's what I love about painting. You know, you work hard on a model, and in the end, you have a painted model. And that's the instant gratification. That's just awesome. You know, it feels great. So I'm hoping that eventually it does. And this is not a giant guild trip or anything to sponsor me in any way. I promise. If you, as I said, if you want to go check it out, awesome. And if you don't. No problem. You know? But you guys are supporting me in your own way anyway. You're watching my videos, you're painting with me right now. And it's through this that I become, I become more popular. And, yeah. You know? And it's all good. Our community is awesome. And I'm very thankful for it. They, for the Patreon thing, it, it asked you to come up saying to come up with a saying, and I was gonna be like happy painting or something like that. So I, but then I'm like, you know what? I'll just put down. Is always grateful for his, his audience because that's true regardless of the outcome of this. It may work, it may not. I can only try. And uh, we'll see. That's all I'm gonna say. We'll see. You know. Mm -hmm. Look at him, he's starting to look really good. I will probably be in, I think I signed up for a tournament. I think I did, because I don't know if my partner signed me up. But um, one of the guys I played the battle report against, or the guy I played with actually, him and I are going to enter a couples tournament, I think in May. And... Uh, That'll be fun. I think it's in May. So, that'll be good. Brawl in the Hall. I don't know what we're going to play. Probably works. You might see, like, Double Grok Face Ripper. Double Grok. I just want to bring all cans and grots. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, by the way, in the background here, that's a harpy upside down. And over here is actually the uh, this week's painting control with Gorman. So. He's over there in, in, this, in the grass, but uh... hmm. yeah, I'm gonna end soon. We're about an hour in, and getting tired. It's been a long day. Unfortunately, this, these work days can be sometimes harsh on me because I work, and then also I walk uh, about half an hour each way, and it wears me out sometimes. But it's all good. I mean, I got some stuff done on him. He's starting to really look good, in my opinion. And uh, he's not done yet, obviously, but uh, I'll see if I can get him finished up for next week and then show him off. Maybe doing a, a tyranny battle report in the near future where the Makira makes an appearance. Giving ample opportunity to let my opponent know ahead of time, of course. Alright, let's end here. 
No. So that concludes another painting with Jay. It was a lot of fun. Painted my Dimacaron, or Dimacaron, however you pronounce it. He's starting to look good. I mean, I'm going to keep working over, on him over the next week. And uh, yeah, so I really hope you enjoyed my April Fool's joke. I It was fun making it. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and what else? Just thank you, all you people, for supporting my videos, for watching my videos, and doing all that you do. You know, it was amazing meeting you at uh, Adepticon, and it was awesome hanging out with some of the viewers earlier in the week. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your support, regardless of what happens in the future. And uh, thank you very much for painting along with me. It's not as lonely when you're painting along with me for painting with Jay's. So thank you as always for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.